Good afternoon and welcome into Mary's Outdoor Kitchen again. I uh, just thought I'd come on and uh, a minute early just to get everybody on, jumping on live. It's so good. Hey Maureen, how are you? <laughs> Hurry up and get that hula hoop out of your attic so you can show me how to do it. I'm waiting. We're going to do a live <laughs> on that. You have to show me. And I know Lucas is going to come on and say hello to you. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I just had to come on today and do another Indian speciality, which is called Alu Gobi. Hi, Susan Pace. How are you? And Lucas. And who else is on here? Good morning, <laughs> Carrie Lynn. Yes, Maureen, I think that would be fun. Do you know who could hula hoop really well? You're going to laugh your butt off. Lucas, he can, he can beat me in the hula hoop championship. Very funny. Hi, Jane and Karen. Oh, Karen, it must be nearly midnight or oh, around 9 or 10 o'clock with you. And Chris, good morning, Jeannie. How's your mask making going? Hi, Anne and Mary. Good, Susan, I'm glad to hear. Have you opened up in Florida yet? I hope not. Hi, Donna. Oh, it's so nice of all you girls to come on here. Well, I've been looking at the videos that I've put on recently, and they've got a lot, a lot of views, so I'm so glad. I hope that... It... Hi, Aileen, how are you? Great to see you, and Kathy and Teresa. And uh, I'm glad because it makes me feel that I'm being of some service and helping you in the kitchen and being able to use up some of your ingredients. This is uh, my sort of uh, third, I think this is my third recipe that has been kind of vegetarian. This is a vegan recipe as well. Um, <clears throat> of course, a lot of Indian food is veg vegetarian and vegan anyway because they use a lot of pulses and plant-based products when they're cooking. At one minute after midnight, Karen, Karen, my friend in Australia, it's one minute after midnight. Paula, how are you? Three minute plan, Kay, you're beating me. <laughs> I'm still at 130, I'm afraid. But I'll get there, don't worry. Watch your back. <laughs> you, Monica, <laughs> Monica, you make me laugh. Monica thought, I was sitting here in a dress the other day, and Monica thought I didn't have my pants on. Anyways, I might not have, Monica. You never know. <laughs> oh, you're back, Lucas, from your holidays in Las Vegas. So glad to see that. <laughs> yes, Paula, well, you're uh, one and a half minutes ahead of me on the plank, so I'll catch up to you. Hi, Leah and Joni. Just say hello to everybody before I get started here cooking, which I love to do, and I know you like to say hello as well. Hi, Tricia. And Paige, nice to see you. Good morning. Ah, now that's a name. Malgarazza. I think I almost said it. It might be Polish, I'm not sure. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> Monica, you're terrible. <laughs> Oh, she's funny, her comments. <laughs> is your husband Norman? Is Norman watching? <laughs> I have my shorts on, by the way, today. My golfing shorts. Even though I'm not golfing, I've got my golfing shorts. Hi, Carol. How are you doing in Edinburgh there? You doing all right? And Peggy and Helen and Julie. Hi. It's so good to see all you girls. Um, I uh, looked at, uh, as I say, there's quite a lot of videos on here on Mary's Kitchen page. If you want to catch up on them at a later stage, there's lots of good information on there. And also, hi Susan, and also if you want to go on my website, www.maryjoancalder.com, there's lots of uh, recipe, there's a, recipes for all sorts of things on there, but we keep adding. We're going to keep adding to that block of recipes there so that you've got a lot of things to to cook but as many of you know me hi Sandra <laughs> oh is he is he in the kitchen Norman Norman Heaney are you in the kitchen I want to know I want you to say hello to me 
Uh, the temperature here, Susan, is about 14 degrees, 14 Celsius. Uh, oh, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> You're my best cheerleader, Kathy. Thank you. And Angie, how are you from Chicago? Is it cold there still? Have you still got snow? Oh, <laughs> Maureen. <laughs> Maureen says, I'm glad you've got bottoms on today. Yeah. She screenshotted me in that little dress I had on. That's my little summer dress. <laughs> and uh, so that was quite funny. Well done, Maureen. I loved it. And Lola, hi. Kimberly. He's unloading the dishwater. Norman, I want you on here watching. <laughs> hi, Jeannie. You've made 400 masks. Well done. That's my friend Jeannie Ferson. She's made 400 masks for her friends, family, and people who require them. She was even going to send me one, but I said to her I had my own mask. She's over there in the States. Leslie, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'll show you this planking carry-on, Leslie. It's, um, I got up to five minutes, uh, a few months ago, but I'm back down to one minute and 30. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for laughing so much. Monica just said a new name for Mary's Kitchen is Bottomless in the Kitchen. Okay, <laughs> we might need to do that. I think we'd be x-rated. I don't think there'd be too many people watching. Well, then again, there might be a lot of people watching. <laughs> hey, Wendy, hi, and Lola. Oh, you're in the classroom teaching, Lola. Oh, wow. Aurelia, hi. And Dawn? <laughs> Tell Norm. <laughs> Monica, you already know the answer to that. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do today, I'd like to have a few laughs with you first. So it's great to see a lot of you coming on. Monica, she's, uh, Monica's a little X-rated. <laughs> anyway, thanks for all the laughs today. Here we are in isolation yet again. What are you all doing? I've been, uh, I'll tell you what I've been doing. Living the good life. I found a bag of potatoes downstairs and thought they all seeded and had grown a massive roots on them. And, uh, Anyway, what I did was I went up to the top of the garden here, I dug a couple of trenches, and I buried them, so I might be lucky if I get, let's see, maybe 60, 70 potatoes when they finally grow, so it should be fun. I'm quite interested, I haven't done that for years, I used to do it all the time, but I haven't done it for years, so you know, here's me living the good life. So this dish consists of potatoes, cauliflower, uh, there's various methods of making this dish. Some uh, Indian people make it dry. Some make it more wet with tomatoes. And mine is going to be a more wet version because I'm serving this as a main course uh, with rice, not as a side dish. So aloo gobi, when we go into our Indian restaurants here in the UK, normally we serve we order it as a side dish but it also comes as a main dish as well hi joy <laughs> karen <laughs> don't encourage her karen <laughs> hi rhonda hi cam and diane hi so anyway just let's start with this uh let me just tell you what's in this dish first of all i've got six potatoes here and i've parboiled those only for like five minutes that's it and when I've taken them off, I've strained them and I've run them under cold water. So I made, I've made, i got these ready this morning already. That is a whole head of cauliflower there. I did the exact same thing. It's a little tender. It's still got some bite in it. And I boiled that for about three, four minutes max, ran it under cold water just to keep it in the same consistency. If you let it remain, if you uh, after you strained it, it is going to carry on cooking, so you need to run cold water under it. I've got one chopped onion. If you've got your pen and paper, the recipe's up there at the top, as always. Hi, Kim and Diane and Jane. 
uh, one chopped onion, red or white onion, it doesn't really matter. If you didn't have an onion, you could use a leek. I've got a lot of coriander here. I'm going to use all of this coriander. So if you ask me how much, I'd say four huge heap tablespoons full of coriander. Now I did something a little different today, and I got six cloves of garlic, and I've got one inch of ginger in here. I've, I've um, mixed it up in my Nutribullet. I added a little tiny bit of water, so I've got a nice ginger and garlic paste, which is great to use in Indian food. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lucas. <laughs> Hi, Paula. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I've got here is I've got one red chili, and I've got half a green chili, because I didn't have a whole, whole green chili. Um, Usually when I'm cooking Indian food, I would love to have ghee butter, which is a specially uh, separated butter. It's so nutty in flavor. It gives such fantastic flavor to Indian food. But unfortunately, I don't have that. <laughs> okay, Monarchy, take a screenshot quick. Hi, Thomas. How are you from Scotland? Nice to see you. And Rosie so I haven't got uh, ghee butter uh, because I need to go specialty shopping for that you can't just normally buy it in the supermarket it's a specialty shop that you need to go to which is mostly an Asian shop and so I'm using a little tiny bit of butter here let's get this up and just melt that and I'm going to use it with a tiny bit of olive oil because I don't want my butter to burn so say two tablespoons of olive oil and about oh half an ounce of butter, two, ta two tablespoons of butter. It's very difficult for me sometimes writing recipes, although I do write them out for you, hi Joan, um, because I do everything by eye and I do everything that comes into here, into my imagination, and that's how I cook. Uh, so I'm not a real huge recipe person, but I do write them out for you as much as I can because I know you do enjoy them. And Monica, make sure you screenshot this so you've got the recipe later. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Thomas. So just uh, melting that butter a little bit. You can see all this quite clearly. Now the thing about this dish, I've got a, also a tin of tomatoes here. 400 gram tin of tomato, 14 ounces of tomatoes. I've also got, just in case I needed, a cup of vegetable stock. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use that yet. I've got mustard seeds. I've got ground coriander. I've got cumin. I've got chilies. I've got whole cumin. I've got cardamom. I've got uh, ground uh, cumin, cinnamon, and turmeric. So there's a lot involved in this dish. And the first thing I'm going to do is put these onions in. There's a lot of spices involved in this dish. It's a really, really spicy dish, which I love. And I'm going to put two, uh, if I can get it open, two tablespoons of cumin seeds in here. Cumin smells wonderful when it's roasting in the, in the uh, oil or ghee if you have it, which is great. Oh, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I love uh, cooking so much, as you probably know. So, and I like sharing these recipes with you. Hi, Heather. And uh, as much as I can, uh, coming on every couple of days live, uh, just to take some boredom out of your, put some fun and joy into the isolation and make uh, cooking a little bit of fun. I hope that that's what it does for you because that's what the intention is here. And uh, just to show you some easy dishes. Now, this is very much my version of an aloo gobi, okay? If you look at an Indian recipe or something, it might be slightly different. I don't know. Um, I'm going to put my potatoes in here. I hope I get everything in this pan. <laughs> it's filling up already. But if I don't, I can slack off on some of the cauliflower. I'll just let that cook for a few minutes. Um, because the potatoes, I just really, really just parboiled them. 
very, very uh, gently. I didn't want to lose the consistency. I didn't want them breaking down. Hey, Betty from Portland. What am I making? Well, I'm making a very special Indian dish called aloo gobi. Aloo potato gobi cauliflower. And um, it's a lovely, lovely vegetarian vegan dish. Uh, you can serve it over top of rice. I like to ma make mine, hi Jamie. I like to make mine a wetter version. Quite often this version is made very dry, uh, just with all these spices that we're gonna be putting in shortly. So we'll just, uh, but I like to make mine a bit wetter because I'm gonna be serving it with rice. So what I would normally do, I wouldn't use a tin of tomatoes if I had uh, three big juicy vine tomatoes there, I would have uh, not quartered them, I would have ate them up and long ways and I would have put them in here just whole fresh because I like to cook really with fresh ingredients all the time. I very rarely cook with pins of any kind except maybe a tin of chickpeas or a tin of tomatoes etc. So you can see the, the um, cumin seeds. Now I'm going to put some mustard seeds. I, I'm saying about two tablespoons because I don't measure, but I put quite a few in because I like the flavor of them and I like the texture. So that's my mustard seeds in there. So this is just a, it's a very fragrant, spicy dish. It's really, really delicious. Thank you, Lucas. Lucas has given me the thumbs up because he's been in India and he has some wonderful Indian friends who've taught him how to do various dishes. <laughs> Monica, say hi. Say hi to Norman. Hi Lydia and Kimberly and Gina. So this is a, I'm so glad a lot of you are watching the videos that I put on here because it does take a great deal of time to get this prepped up. And um, I try to make dishes that I'm going to be eating in isolation, which this is one of them. And I have been eating quite a lot of vegetarian of late. I'm going to put my cauliflower in there. I hope it all goes in. I hope. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. No, it probably won't. That's a big head of cauliflower I have there. It might want to start cooking it a wee bit. There we go. Just get that all cooking in there. Um, yeah, I just, uh, thought I wasn't, you know, on purpose or anything, but I started eating a lot of, um, uh, vegetarian dishes, and I'm not sure why, because I really like meat. I'm going to put my garlic and ginger paste in there about two tablespoons. I'm going to save a little bit because I can cook with that later and keep it in a jar or whatever. This is going to be real. This is my version. This is not an Indian restaurant version, okay? I, because I like it. My vegetables with a bit of bite in them. Oh, thank you, Monica. <laughs> I know you're winding me up. <laughs> anyway, you can smell the ginger and the garlic, so I put six cloves of ginger in there, one uh, inch of, of ginger, oh, sorry, six cloves of garlic and one inch of ginger in there. And I emulsified it in my uh, Nutribullet with a little bit of water, All right? You can keep that in the fridge for quite a period of time, and it's great to cook stir fries with. So that's a ginger and garlic paste. You see how lovely this is. Okay, we're going to add some, <clears throat> I'm going to add, let's see, I think we've got turmeric. i add a little bit of turmeric. So again, one or two teaspoons. To your liking, it depends also how much cauliflower you have in here. Monica, I've got my shorts on today. You'll be happy to see. Happy to report. I'm going to put some ground cumin in here. I don't know why they put those small. Let's see. 
There we go. About two teaspoons. I'm going to put some ground coriander in here. My, for some reason, my spices seem to be stuck at the top. As you see, I don't really... I'm going to put some cardamoms in. The cardamoms are good, better if you kind of whack them before you put them in there or squeeze them to get the, them broken, to get the cardamom seeds out of them, which are really, really tasty. A little touch of cinnamon, a little touch, not too much, just to give it some fragrance. I've got my chili here. Okay, we're just going to let that cook for a few minutes. Oop. Filling out of the pan. Don't worry about if things fall out of your pan. This is a really fragrant, fragrant dish. Hi, Jody and Manny. Nice to see you. Glenda, how are you? Now, Glenda, get that recipe, uh, that soda bread recipe I gave you. Uh, it's really, really easy to make. You can make it in 30 minutes, okay? And it doesn't require any yeast. You just need uh, two heat tablespoons of baking soda to make it rise. All right, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of my stock, a tiny bit, just to help. See, I wanna coat all my cauliflower and my potato in this beautiful spices and cook them all. It's gonna take probably, after I finish putting this all together, about 30 minutes to cook. Obviously, I'm not going to keep you hanging on for that because I just like to come and show you how to put it together. And you can see how the cauliflower is absorbing all the spices. Oh, it's a great one. This dish is so delicious. Oh, we're losing a little one or two things here. I'm going to put a little bit more stock in there. A little bit of coriander cook some of the coriander down with the cauliflower and the potatoes. This is a nice recipe. I wish they served this like this in the Indian restaurants, but they don't. It comes to you and it's all kind of mushy and mashed up. But we're starting to get a nice little thing going on down there. And then this is my one tin of tomatoes. As I said, I'd like to use three fresh tomatoes, but I don't have three fresh tomatoes. So I'm going to use one tin of tomatoes there. And just mix that all in. I'm probably going to add the rest of my stock too from what I see. As I said to you, I just do things as I think they might need it being planned. Uh, if not, I just add one or two. Oh, there's, there's a potato, don't waste. There we go. And that's a really, really simple vegetarian vegan dish. Now you need to let this cook. And I am going to add the rest of that stock. You need to let this cook for another 20 or 30 minutes to really get the flavors going in. I've got lots of fresh coriander here that I'm going to mix in. And just before I serve it, I'm going to mix in another couple of tablespoons of fresh coriander or cilantro, however you know the name of it. And I think that dish has turned out pretty darn good. You see, sometimes um, when you order this, in an Indian food restaurant, it comes very dry, but I like it a bit wetter because I'm serving it as a main course. So how's that? Is that think you think you would like to eat something like that? Let's see who's on here. Hey, Pamela. You missed the beginning again. Pamela, just go back and we we rewatch I'm making aloo gobi today which is uh, cauliflower and potato and cauliflower Indian food. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. I'm quite excited to try this actually um, and take a photograph of it. <laughs> uh, but again, it's a lovely vegetarian meal, no meat involved. Hey, Glenda. Oh yes, Glenda, I wish you could come over and eat with me too. <laughs> Hey Cheryl and Lola, Karen, it is good. 
Yes, Pam, watch the replay because it's a really, really easy recipe. But what we're doing now, although I parboiled my cauliflower and my potato, what I'm doing now is I'm just cooking it in the stock, like about one cup of stock and my uh, 14 ounce tin of tomatoes just to soften up. I don't want this mushy, okay? I don't want it. It's a bit like Italian pasta. I like it al dente. Oh, yes, Diane, probably you did. This is a really nice, of course, a lot of Indian food, as I said before, is a vegetarian or vegan. Uh, this particular one is vegan, so, um, well, maybe not the butter, I'm not sure, yeah. Uh, but you can add um, any type of vegetable to this. You could add um, zucchini, courgette, you could add green beans. It really, although the recipe is alu gobi, which is potato and cauliflower, you could use your imagination on this dish quite a bit. So that's basically it in a nutshell. If you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comments and I'm happy to... Yes, uh, uh, Chris, I do serve this with uh, basmati rice and that's it. You could also, if you had any fresh mango, you could put a little bit of fresh mango in there. Really bring out some really nice flavors. I, if I had a fresh mango, I would definitely put the fresh mango in with this dish. It would just taste awesome. Absolutely awesome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope you all enjoyed that. And I'm just going to let it cook away for probably another 20 minutes or so. And just make sure I got everything in here. I do. And I hope you enjoy that. That's Alu Gobi, a Mary Kitchen style. And uh, a lovely, lovely, refreshing vegetarian dish and exceedingly tasty. So I hope to see you in a couple of days. And thanks for coming on. And I hope you enjoy. See you later. Bye.